Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back for another weekly wrap up. This time, this is my final one of May, and this has been an interesting week. I've had some ups and I've had some downs. So we're just going to get into it. The first thing I finished this week was Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee, and this is a novella. Uh, this follows Esther, who has become a Rooker, I think is the w way to say that. She has bonded with this giant rock, which is the big bird, and is using the rock to hunt Manticore. And she's doing this because a Manticore killed her mother and little brother, when she was, I think, nine years old, and she feels like the manticore ruined her life, ruined her peace and her sense of security. So she has decided that this is what she wants to do. So this novella is centered around her time when she has her rock named Zara. So you begin with her meeting Zara for the first time, and you go through her training Zara so that Zara decides to listen to Esther and not return to the wild. And while she is training with Esther, she develops a friendship with Darius, who is another Rooker. She had already had a friendship with Nazmine, who is a female Rooker in the society. This kind of follows modern society where females aren't seen as should be in pl certain places, but they need females because the rocks don't always bond well with males. So there are females, but just not as many as the males. And to become a Rooker, you either need to volunteer or you are selected from your county. And Esther has volunteered. There's no guarantee that she's going to survive the training process. Of course, you know, she does and goes out. And this is where you have the subplot of her coming to grips with what has happened in the past as she is training to hunt manticores and then does go out and ha hunt manticores and you see a little bit more of Nazmin, her friend and Darius who is also her friend and they have very different friendships that's an interesting contrast because it also shows their personality with their their own rocks and how they work together and hunt and I really enjoy this this was a nice solid read very different from the Greenbone Saga, so if, if you've read that and you love that, this is going to be a different flavor. And I forgot to say that this also was the book that I chose to read for the Chaos Queens readathon because it has the word sky in the title. I was on the sky team. And then it was also on my read a book, read one book published every year between 2000 and 2023, and this is my 2023 book. I then worked on human beasts and ghosts and I got to the very end and decided to DNF it because I just I couldn't take it anymore. The satire just was grating on my nerves. Not my sense of humor and we finally got to a story called Cat which is just very circular and yeah, it was everything that I don't like reading from this time period. So I, I read 80% of this and so I went ahead and rated it on Goodreads. But if you like satire and like the writings from like the 1930s, 1940s, you might like this. I really didn't, but it was one of my May of Moderns reads. Then I needed a palette cleanser, so I picked up Delicious and Dungeon Volume 9, and it was okay. The storyline is continuing, but again, we're following more of the side characters, Kevru and another elf. They kind of hint at what Laos and the main party are going to be facing. I don't feel the same, like, 
Oh, I love him to Kebru as I do to Laos. It was okay. Continue the story. And then this goes with my readathon wrap up. I tried reading C.S. Lewis's Out of a Silent Planet and ended up DNFing it. I don't normally mention my DNFs, but because this was related to a readathon, my May of the Moderns. Yeah. It was just very purple prosy, over the top. And I, I'm just not interested in reading it. And it was one that I was like, I'm not going to be interested in reading that in the future either. So I took it off my what to read list and its sequels. I then finished The Last Gifts of the Universe by Rory August. And that is one of our self-published science fiction contest finalists. And this was amazing. I loved it. It is a space opera paired with a grief story, and it's grief for a parent who has died before the story begins, and also grief for civilizations that have been wiped out, and there's no understanding of why that is happening. So it's following Scout primarily, and their brother Kieran. Scout is an archivist, or they're both archivists, but Scott is a, the archaeologist, and Kieran is the tech guy. And they come up against a, another group from a for-profit company looking for the same things. Hence the space opera-ness of it. I will be having a fuller review coming out here in the future. So I only have one book that is in progress at this moment, and that is Monsters We Defy. I got this back out from the library, picked up where I left off, and am continuing it. And I expect to continue I expect to finish it this week as I'm making more rapid progress in it. And then for what else I am continuing to read, I, I'm going to be continuing to read the finalists for the self-published science fiction contest. I think the next one I'm going to pick up is Hammer and Crucible. <laughs> For my writing wrap up, I have not been actively writing stories, fiction. I am working on an application for a volunteer position. But for fiction wise, I have been listening to music that is related to, I call it my music story because all the characters come from a piece of music and that's not typically how I write. And then just daydreaming and thinking of scenes and relationships, conversations that will happen in this book or in one of its sequels, because I know that's going to be a quartet. Once this volunteer application is done, I hope to be able to write. I mean, honestly, I might not actually get a lot of writing time until July when things are going to be calming down a little bit. And for other media, I'm continuing to work on elementary. And again, I still really enjoy Joan Watson and Sherlock Holmes in this iteration. I can see where they were needing some more conflicts, and so that's where we have Gregson's not happy with Sherlock, and then Belle's not happy with Sherlock, but they're both cool with Joan. I mean, that's always an interesting dynamic right there. I think when we keep the story centered on Sherlock and Joan, the story is normally a little bit better than when it's centered on the side characters. Not to say that side characters aren't interesting and the actors are amazing, but I think we lose some of the deduction magic. But that's just me. What is coming up next? My review of The Last Gifts of the Universe. I don't know if it's going to come out before or after this video. If it if it comes out before, it should be like the video right before. And if it comes out afterwards, it will be the one that it, directly after this. <laughs> I realize that I am not on a timeline when I set things out. It's more as I have time to film, I film. And then as I have time to edit, I edit and then I post it when it is done. Or, and then I post upload and post it when it is ready so that's kind of my posting schedule do you guys have any readathon plans for this summer i do not 
I have not heard of any readathons going on yet. Um, I'm participating in the Krista Nelly Awards. That's hosted by Krista Nell SFF Reader. She decided she wanted to do an experiment of what would happen if booktubers who read a lot nominated books, would that change from what gets nominated from the Hugos? And there was, she said seven, and there were like seven different, like none of the books overlapped. We had some overlapping on the no novellas, which was interesting. And so I am reading those books that I had not yet read. And then when the Hugos come out, I'll be working on the Hugos. But otherwise, I am not aware of any readathons or other reading challenges. So we will see what I get into. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you.